Well, Vex is the easiest route, I would say. There it yep, is. There it is. Yep. Makes sense because you yep. you already have Yuzhong and Edith. Yeah. Yeah. So lock that in. Fred can do his thing, you know. At least and their advantages is when it comes down to wave clearing. So that means they get to move first. And they get to clean up the map, make some space for uh, Long, the uh, international marksman. But what this affords for Falcon Esports, the pride of the Burmese, is a very comfortable yet unorthodox lineup. It's very Myanmar. It's very 1-3-1. It's the mm -hmm. first time I've seen this in a while. Yeah, no, uh, honestly, even Malaysia, Indonesia, everybody has got a little bit of taste of this ruby gold lane. And generally, you're just trying to smother your opponent, right? As long as you clear these waves faster, I don't think Lung can win out these trades against the ruby as long as they are minions. And Falcony Sports, what they want to do is uh, play the Predator. They got to be aggressive with a capital A. Looking at the loadouts here, Warcry on Dax's Roger, which I expect to be uh, ahead of uh, Zed's Fredrin. Again, a big head scratcher why the Fredrin came in so early. But then again, we reckon it might be down to comfort. Yeah, I, I think it does come down to comfort. And I think, you know, they still need a brick wall at the end, end of the day, right? Having two brick walls with Godyang uh, on this Edith as well as the Fredrin isn't a bad idea. I think the main issue right now is how does XYG start getting a lead? Because once they start getting ahead and invade the enemy jungle, I think Dax is going to have a much harder time to scale to a relevant state. Which is made possible by Zed and God Yang's rotation. Again, mm -hmm. even through the first uh, wave of buffs, that's what they've been doing. Usually you see a roamer go with a gold laner, but then again, it's long we're talking about. You have to go with the less than favorable matchup. Kel VJ getting a few beads on him by Dax. God Yang very close. Watching out. Something to note, Kel VJ, this is specialty Yu Zhang as well. Mm -hmm. We've seen him do well with this hero all throughout their season while they were playing in the China qualifiers. I mean, right now, they're trying to bait out emotion from the side of Falcon Esports, right? I think Dax has wasted way too much, uh, too much time up on the top side of the map. And in the meantime, on the bottom side, Zed, he's able to get like two camps up on him. Uh-huh. And now he's making the long rotation. That's God Yang still checking in, trying to hit level four. Dax with the pull on the turtle. Not gonna commit just yet. Level four yet to be reached by our XP laner, Zed, now wailing away. Yep, uh, this should be a free turtle for the side of XYG. I don't think they're gonna contest it at all. And Black Dragon form just to find absolutely nothing here. This is definitely a set play from XYG's side. They're not gonna find anything, but still a free neutral is a free neutral. And what this does for XYG is put them up about 500 gold. When are we gonna see the rubber band effect from Falcon Esports? Because again, if you guys caught the stream B broadcast of C9 versus Falcon Esports in our opening day, I think they played a very similar tempo. We're just waiting for when. It's not if. Not if they could, but when they will, especially since they want to smother XYG. When are we going to see that, Gideon? When do you think that'll come in? Are we waiting for second turtle, third turtle, maybe even when the Lord comes up? Okay, personally for me, I think that if the momentum, as of right now, there's slight momentum for the side of XYG. If that momentum continues and starts to like 2x itself, second and third turtle might be tough. If you go for the stereotypical way of how Falcons esports usually contest, I would say second turtle, there'll be a bit of recon that needs to be done. And then and afterwards, I'm expecting the 12th minute for them to really start to pop off. Man, sounds like a slow takeoff. They got to work on that, maybe spread their wings a little further, because that's what this lineup is made up for. They're made to be aggressive, and now that we see that they've all reached level 4, we know that there's a bloom, uh, we know that Royal Milk might have his first item, uh, and I think that's one of the weaknesses that this lineup has since we are seeing Benny on a gold lane ruby. Mm -hmm. Usually Benny is your late game uh, finisher. He's your insurance policy, as we like to call. But now that he's more of a fighter, I don't know if that's going to happen here. XYG looking to capitalize on this early advantage. Four-man rotation down bottom. Kid X sandwiched. Benny just doing his darndest to get some farm in. Yeah, I think at this point, XYG are doing a really uh -oh. good job. I mean, Kid X, he's got flicker, so don't worry. As long as he gets out of the energy eruption, he's totally fine. But just the rotations, right? They're trying to make sure that Dax is on his toes when it comes down to these camp timers. Previously, he ran down to the bottom side to pick up that orange buff. And Zed, he had already rotated to steal one camp, so he already had a rough idea of what that timer was going to be. Grand Theft Orange. Falcon Esports looking like a wet blanket. That's what their lineup is. Again, they're meant to smother. <laughs> yep. All this while, Shanyu Gaming is a brick house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Running through you, <laughs> going from objective to objective. Now they're going for their second turtle. And again, it looks like Dax 
He's a baby werewolf. Like, he can't really do much. Here comes KLVJ. Mm -hmm. It's just not worth it. I think KLVJ can actually go uh, really push the tempo, but I think XYG, as of right now, we're going to take the free neutral. No need to actually put ourselves at risk at this point of time because if we're talking about leads, Zed already has a lead onto Dax, a full level ahead. KLVJ is doing a pretty good job against Royal Milk so far, but most importantly, Lung is starting to get ahead of Benny. He's two levels up on him. That's right. The international marksman building it up, mewing to Lux Max very soon. I wonder what the items are. Here we go. Let's check in. Uh, 500 gold. Ah, between Zed and Dax. Now a fight down bottom. Okay. We can breathe easy. Um, yeah, an item on uh, Long here. First up, Corrosion Scythe. Yep, he just wants to peel back, right? He knows that it's going to be really difficult to kill Benny at the end of the day. And I, I have to agree with him. It's just not worth the time and effort. You might as well play to scale anyways because your comp is going to be stronger towards the later sections. But even for Falcon Esports, we're not finding these like lane advantages that they can exploit. Uh-oh. Uh Fight up. Kid X, he's gonna get hit by the energy eruption here. They should be able to walk out for free, but PX7 might have something to say about this. But so far, Falcon Esports, I was expecting PX7 to be the main driving force here, but it looks like E1, with the help of Guardian, is making sure that he's stuck in this lane. Look at that! Every single time, three, four people show up to just clear one wave. I, I get it, because again, Falcon Esports, yes, I agree, PX7 should be that initiator, the catalyst to their aggression, but he just has but one lifeline, Gideon. He just has the Purify <laughs> going up against XYG who has killed VJ for CC. Even Yi Won has CC. Long has CC. God, yeah. Th they all have CC. I mean, they gotta unlock somebody out of their lanes right now because I think they're playing too independently of each other. Like, uh, f uh, at least for Kid X, his job is the easiest. Just sit back, don't die, relax, get ready to press your alt when it's necessary. You'll eventually scale to the later stages of the game. But you also have to consider, oh, here we go, the pull. God, Yang. Okay. At half health? All okay, right. that's a non-starter. Okay, I mean, they didn't even get a battle spell, which is kind of unfortunate, but hey, wait a minute, PX7 is getting chunked out in the middle of the turret. Had to use his Purify anyways, and finally a lead for XYGs to get into the mix with Royal Milk taking a brunt off that damage. Now even Godgang coming up with the ult as well. KLVJ finally getting into the mix. Doesn't really get anything off of this. Great Vengeance coming in from Royal Milk to stay alive. Looks like a lot of cardio. <laughs> Not much action, really. <laughs> they were jogging in place. Half health on a majority of XYG. First turtle looking great for Falcon. There's the pull. He's already found it. Zed, he's in trouble. Doesn't even get the ult off in time. First blood achieved as Look finally takes the trade onto Bax. But Benny is still too strong in the earlier stages of the game. Able to deal with along by himself. As long as there's members, there are there is plenty of options to sustain. Does he find the kill onto Lung? We cut away, but no. Oh. Lung's still alive at one HP. Oh, Kid X looking to get sneaky. I wonder if he knows the flicker in the stun and the Basic, he does get in. He mm -hmm. does. He's aware. He's aware. And he's even going to help Royal Milk dive kill VJ underneath the turret with mid tier one in the pocket as well. Falcon Esports cracked this game wide open. Swooping down the Burmese bite back. We were looking for it. We were waiting for it. Eight minutes. That's when it snaps. The final turtle seems to be the final straw. I bet all the Burmese watching are like, come on, they're sweating. Like, when? When? Your <laughs> roster, your lineup is made to be aggressive. And now down bottom. They're going to look for this tier one, right? I mean, that's that's the speed up we expect from Falcon. I was saying 12 minutes because I was expecting uh, uh, Xiangyu Gaming to really take their time with this, right? They could have slowed down that fight, but I think, you know, they got over eager once Lung got into the mix, knowing that he's like a full level ahead oh. of Benny. Now that it's equal, Royal Milk now in some trouble. That Vengeance finally going to time out. Looks like PX7 unable to bail him out of him uh, out of there just then. Yep, I'd say PX7 was maybe three seconds worth of uh, distance away. So it wasn't going to happen regardless. Looking at the item game here, PX7 up by about a thousand away from Yi1. Uh, also a huge gap between KLVJ and Royal Milk, despite Royal Milk going down as well. A lot of pundits, a lot of critics of Falcon Esports will say Royal Milk is the weak link. Royal Milk is the Achilles heel of Falcon Esports. But now, he seems to be one of the anchors. He seems to have taken the time to really like say, hey guys, I'm over here. The rest of my team are farming in the other lanes. Come on over, come on over. I mean, he's an instigator. Don't get me wrong, right? I, I think that, you know, if we're talking about the big hitters, it's definitely PX7 on this farm. He definitely has heroes that he really shines on, right? If there is a uh, bronze, silver, and gold, he's platinum, man. He's above it all. He's platinum Faramis. He's platinum Faramis. It's disgusting. But but 
that's only because Royal Milk is able to kind of initiate and absorb that damage. Exactly. Oh. Those are the words from SD14 and Edward Zed very low. He's so low. He's going to get hit by the Lycanpost. Even the Retribution saved by the Eternal Guard Force to get on out there as they peel backwards to try and make something nice happen. But a great pull. I'm offended. But wait, hold on. They're turning it around. Long is able to find the pin two times and even gets PX7. It's a four for nothing trade in favor of XYG. There's only so much a lone Florin can do. She can heal you. She can get heals in without any detriment. But no, not with the amount of damage that Lone has put out, as well as the counter CC, the initiation by Kel VJ and the rest of XYG. Look at that. Oh, also an aggressive flicker in. Mm -hmm. XYG. They're aware. They know of the dynamics. Who's the beatdown? Exactly, right? The target priority is pretty good, but also at the same time, Lung had a great eye for opportunity. He found the initial uh, knockback. Actually, it happened twice in that fight. The initial knockback happened here in this part of the map, right in the middle. And then as they, you know, rolled back a bit and then pushed forward again. They're stretching them like dough. Amazing. The back and forth really rocked Falcon Esports there, and that led to XYG being up by about 2,000. And oh, the international marksman doing work, clearing up that top lane. Now, the tier two in mid in jeopardy as well. How do they defend? Falcon Esports is the first time they've actually been on the back foot. I mean, the early game is one thing, but now XYG's knocking down your base. Well, let's see here whether they lose an inhibitor. Benny's going to get hit by the Eternal Guard, but he's fine. He can sustain through all of the damage as long as there are waves. Unfortunately for XYG, they don't have a clear way to initiate without their battle spells, and it doesn't help that their sieging isn't that great without the Black Dragon form. Yep, two minutes until the next turtle comes up. Two and a half thousand gold ahead. Chinese squad are over the Burmese. Look at the damage that Lung is putting down. This Ooh. is dangerous what he's doing. There's a knock up. He's confident. He wants to get more into the mix, but uh, he's kind of slowed down thanks to Royal Milk. Regardless, they still get all the tier two turrets from Falcon Esports. And this is what we were expecting from XYG. When they find the opportunity, they're going to start from your tier ones all the way to your inhibitors. They are thorough. Mm -hmm. They are procedural and Maybe they can work on their precision, but hey, if you're playing with a sledgehammer lineup like this, a uh, comp that just relies on long, I mean, almost single-handedly long, and then maybe a little bit of a E1 on uh, the uh, step back, then yeah, definitely. There's a lot that Falcon Esports need to work on here. I wonder now how they can fight outside the base, because again, the under turret punish is good on Benny, right? It's perfect. Yep. But when they meet up here in these little... Oh, let's, let's just check. All right. When they meet up in these little alleyways, these little corridors outside their base, do they have enough firepower? Can they close the gap here? I think... All right. So their firepower is very conditional, right? Their firepower is if they can get XYG to clump up really close together so they get the multiplier... With the bursters. With the bursters, right? From PX7. I mean, that's not all. Obviously, it's going to be very helpful for, like, Benny, of course. And, well, Royal Milk can definitely slow to people uh -oh. down. Oh, yeah, I'm offended comes through, but look, he's going to get hit by the initial snare. They pull away, and look, tries his best. Oh, Spirit Destruction! Oh, the one that's inside! He might be able to win this 1v1, even with the heal coming in from Florin. It might just be too much. He's out of position. Gets, tr uh, tries to regroup with the rest of his team, but it's too late. The Netherrealm is not going to let him find it. Kel VJ trying to turn it around as E1 is out of position. Forced to walk back into the Y brush. God Yang can really take his time. Benny is sustaining through so much pain. And even for VX7, He's just waiting to slowly encroach upon their positions. It's now they're all running away. There's nothing that they can do as they get picked off one by one. The slow march by Falcon Esports allowed for two I'm offended. Two I'm offended to go off cooldown and can continue the assault. Eight to six now. Another swing of the pendulum towards the Burmese. Oh, now no. up by a thousand. They're looking for a penetration. I think they're going to get it. Yeah, they're going to get this. Dude, oh, is, oh, hey, hello? Hello? Why are we not taking out it? Free inhibitor? here as the Eternal Guard comes down, forcing the rest of FCON to start taking away oh. Tier 2's. No. SOD. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. There's He's a retribution. Already, he I wouldn't. mean, there's, there's retribution no? and also the last time he tried to 1v1, it didn't go well because of Kid X. All right. Good rewind. Let's go back maybe 20, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. A nanosecond of hesitation 
of speculation on Long. I, I'm not so sure if, if, if Moskov mains will question me on this when I say maybe Long could have leaned hard on that engage. Oh. Maybe that would have won him the fight against Dax and would have killed Dax even before this all went down. I don't think so. I think that the heal coming in from Kid X was just a little too big, right? I, I think if you take out the heal, 100% he kills him there, right? I think the only other advantage he could find is if he decided to switch out that Purify for maybe an Inspire. Maybe it would have ended the fight almost <laughs> yeah. single-handedly, but that would make him more vulnerable. Now, the Lord jumping in, crashing through the top. Oh, of a big I'm offended! Fights to in to the Eternal Guard, and then straight away into the Nether Realm to try and peel some time. With the Lord already knocking at their base, they should be able to get one more inhibitor before they try and close things out. But that's a lot of resources and a dead jungler Woo! and a knockback of a lifetime. Long, this is why he's the international marksman. Turns in around single-handedly. <laughs> God Yang with a God Mode Earth Shatter, and they equalize XYG. No. Almost no. SOD to the back. He wants to go for more. He's already locked down, but it looks like he bit off more than he could chew. That's going to be a two for two trade at the very end of it. But man, I'm telling you, this fleeting time on Kid X, the heals with his alt and Gail VJ, hello. hello. He's going to make it out. He's not going to make it out of this. He's not going to make it out of this. No, no. Not when CC gets the ult back up. Zed is already here to start peeling him off. Eternal Guard actually towards px 7 side, forcing the Nether Realm to come on out. Target acquisition looking a little disorientated from XYG. I get it. It's sensory overload. Falcon Esports are doing so much on so many different fronts. The Lord, that push in mid, up top. A fight on many different uh, angles coming in, especially now that the lead is the biggest it's ever been. A quick look once more on the attempted clapback. They don't even get PX7 because, again, they didn't know that the uh, cooldown off of the Nether Realm would have been done by then. And now, 5K, approaching 5K. Falcon Esports is, after a punish in mid, they win a fight down bottom. I think Falcon Esports are approaching their power spike right now. This is where in, mm -hmm. even if, even if God Yang gets a good CC on two or three, Falcon Esports, their right-click potential, their auto attacks are just going to get so much better from now on. I mean, they, they're going to have a lot of value in this, right? That's why Falcon Esports have to be very precise, right? they got to drop pod in at the right time and catch as many of the right people. And ideally, that would be Lung plus one. And that could be anybody, really. And I think that if they're going to find Lung, he's going to have to make a mistake because I think that XYG can really take their time with a lot of these plays. But maybe the decision-making when it comes to those moment-to-moment, -moment. like even in the replay we saw earlier, right? There was a good opportunity for Zed to actually lock down PX7 to guarantee the kill. Uh-huh. But then again, PX7 is sitting clean and pretty on a Purify. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that Shanyu Gaming have to think about when they make these big engages. They sense it. They hear it. The Lord is being worked on, approaching a third of its health. Zed up in the front lines, long keeping his distance. I mean, they got to walk up here, right? I mean, the waves may not necessarily be in their favor, but I think for Falcon, uh, Falcon Esports, they can really, really just uh, let it go back and forth. They got to reset it fully, though. Uh-huh. Not a good look. Not for XYG. Oh. Here we go. I'm offended. He comes on forward, pulls Zed backwards, hit by the Earth Shatter, onwards as well, locked two, and now the back line. Royal Book has already found Zed, but with the Vengeance, he's able to tank a little bit longer than he should. It's the help of the Nether Realm. They're falling into this choke point mistake once more. They've learned it, but the damage has been done. And now it's back to regular programming as Falcon Esports going to go for this Lord unhindered, unbothered. He went in the back long as well. The Retribution by Dax. Well, we're seeing the difference here. Lung is going to try and 1v4 this, but I mean, look at that. PX7 single-handedly just blowing them up. God Yang does find the trade backwards on towards it, but man, they got to be uh -oh. super... No, no, Dax, Dax, he's in some trouble. Kid X might have to sacrifice his life in favor for Dax, but he's going to stay nearby, get the heals down, try to turn it around, get him low enough, look for the opportunity as Dax finds it Nether Realm to ensure that this Primal Wrath is worthless. God Yang should be going down, and now with a exposed crystal, Epcot, looking to close things out. They smell the blood in the water as they go in. Zed at half health, the Black Dragon from a kill, BJ. It's done, it's over. They've cracked open the crystal. These fights, they need to be decisive. And it's not even about the macro decision making, it's about target acquisition. I agree, Gideon, I agree more than ever. I'd say of the dozens of... Well, what we think is that you guys are correct, this game, it's really about the mechanics. Like, we're looking at the highlights here. A lot of time we see Benny actually catching out of Fredrid, 
causing the match to go to their side, but can I just say, like, every single time I watch the play, I'm like, no! <laughs> no! Like, I think that was all of us, man. No, why? It's like he's his worst enemy. And uh, but then again, you have to give credit to FCON. Yeah. Three comeback games so far. They're the new comeback kings. Is it? Is they it might be. Is it really a comeback when they plan for it? Well, hey, the lineup that they had. <laughs> this, you know, we talked about like extending team fights because yep. of the Nether Realm plus the heals from the Florin. This was the perfect picture of yep. that idea. And um, you know, I, I kind of, I will uh, indulge in what you just said, Mr. Okay. Lapel. Okay. Is this a uh, part of the FCOG plan all along? Well, one thing that I can say is that their composition is very <laughs> dependent on the late game.